Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jason here from JCR Cars. I have a little topic today I think is gonna be interesting. And uh, this is for new owners, potential owners, and anybody that's interested in the brand, of course, in Ferrari. But the dilemma, there's an old dilemma here of driving the cars or saving them. Saving those kilometers. This is actually something very interesting and I'm really curious to hear what people think about this topic because it's something as an owner that you think about right away once you get one of these cars in your garage. And I'm very curious what people think about this. So buckle up, let's talk about it. So what's the main reason people, why they don't use these cars? Well, I think the, the big problem is mileage. People are afraid of the mileage you put on this car or any Ferrari and how that's going to impact the resale value of them later on should you want to sell these cars. And it is true, uh, mileage is important. It's very important on a new car. As soon as you drive off the lot, obviously this is the same for any car, uh, you're gonna lose anywhere from 10 to 20% of the value minimum. And that's really true for Ferraris, especially for stock Ferraris, ones that aren't maybe coming from the tailor-made program or, or rare ones, they're gonna drop significantly as soon as you go off the dealer's lot. And to a certain point, uh, that, um, that, that um, drop in the, the appreciation or the value of the car is going to continue on till somewhere around 10,000 kilometers or, or miles. And then it's going to stabilize and slow down. So that's the real reason or the first reason I would say why people don't dr uh, use these cars a lot is they're afraid of the, uh, of the drop in value. I think the other reason though that's maybe not spoken about as much or is not as transparent is that the owners, the users of these cars are afraid of the maintenance costs that are going to be incurred when you use them more. And I have to admit that's something that's in the back of your mind, especially with more complicated cars like the Testarossa. And uh, when you have breakdowns like you've had recently this year, uh, it makes you think about it more not maybe so much for the for the cost but for the aggravation of having to trailer them and you can't take them to any specific mechanic unless you're doing it all the work yourself and uh, I think that's uh, one that people typically don't talk about but in reality nobody wants to get a bill for five thousand ten thousand euros or dollars uh, when something goes wrong in a car it hurts and that's probably it I think a lot of times non-owners of the car uh, of these cars will often say that uh, you know you have to drive these things but they don't realize this is one of the things that's in the back of owners minds and it doesn't matter if you're driving a new one or an old one when things go sideways uh, it's gonna hurt and particularly if you want to do longer trips on uh, with one of these cars you don't want to have a breakdown because it's not really easy to get these serviced uh, along the way uh, my hats off to those people like Harry's Garage, another friend from uh, from Belgium, Alex. Uh, you know, doing long kilometers, long drives with these cars, and not being afraid of that breakdown. I think that's impressive. Another reason why people do not use these cars is I think is they may maybe want to keep the experience special, and I can honestly say that is definitely something that. Uh, is in the back of your mind, especially in my circumstance where I don't have a long driving season. Uh, every moment you spend in this car is special, even if it's for just making a video like I'm doing today. And the more you drive it, the more, uh, the more it becomes just a standard average drive. And I'm not saying that ever, that would happen with a Ferrari, but some people would be thinking of uh, that as, okay, well, if I drive it on the weekends, I know it's gonna stay as special as the day I bought it. And that can be a consideration why uh, people will, will tend to leave them in their garages longer than they do. In my case, why? I don't drive it as often as I, as I should. And in reality, I put about 1,500 kilometers on, my, on each car per season. One might be a little bit less, one might be a little bit more. From uh, maintenance issues, one may have to go away for a couple of weeks, for a month uh, in reality. So I might miss part of the driving season. But my seasons are quite short from the 1st of May to the end of November is when I keep these on the road. And uh, later than that, it starts to ice up on the roads. Uh, earlier in that, uh, same thing, or you'll, sit, you'll see gravel on the roads from the winter driving. And I just don't want to put the cars through that. It's not to say that it doesn't warm up earlier, but I, uh, I avoid, I avoid uh, anything earlier and later than those time periods uh, just to keep them in the condition they are. And on top of that, 
you know, I drive them, maybe drive them after work. And I'll admit, after work, if the weather's good, I'll want to go for a drive. But uh, as of late, the weather's changing quite a bit here as well. We tend to have storms in the afternoon, uh, late afternoon, evening. And I don't really want to drive them in the rain or in the shitty weather. So that's what happens. It comes down to a weekend. And uh, obviously with life, family, work, uh, you don't always have the time to drive it. And when you drive these cars, you shouldn't just go for a 10-minute drive. You have to let everything warm up. Uh, so that means about 50 kilometers in the least. And that usually ends up being uh, why I won't take it out of the garage is because I can't do that. Um, or traffic on a busy weekend like we have here today. But uh, when, it's, you know, when it works out, I'm happy to get it out and exercise it. And this is the kind of road when the traffic's good where you definitely want to get out and drive. I'm not sure if it's going to work on the way up today, but we're going to try it. Why should you be driving these cars? Well, of course, should I, have, should I explain that? It's a Ferrari, all right? Every time you get in this thing, it's a real experience. Uh, every emotion possible from the sound to just the feeling of being in the seat, the emotions it brings on is, is amazing. And if you've come from driving having a breakdown, spending a lot of money on the car and getting back in the car, you quickly forget about all that stuff that you had that prevented you from driving in the past. And today is actually a funny experience. I was driving, leaving my house, and uh, I see a family and they're waving at me like crazy. They want me to stop, a father and two sons, and they wanted to see the car. They wanted to uh, get a close look at it. They were from out of town, they are from Israel, and the father said the only reason the, the boys wanted to come here was they wanted to see Ferraris. And I was one of those kids when I was young. And uh, of course I let him in the car, take pictures of it, and uh, they, were, they were just thrilled. Made their, made their holiday. And that's the kind of experience it's like when you get in the car almost every time. So that's why you should drive it. Other thing is, these cars need to be driven particularly the classics. If you don't drive them, you let them sit for a while, they really don't like it. It takes a while until they start uh, behaving again. Uh, the fuel injection cars, for sure. I'm sure the carbureted cars, although I haven't had one, I'm sure they're just as finicky. And it really is true, though. If I drive the car, drive it the next day again or a couple days later, it works really, really well. If I leave it for a week, it doesn't like that at all, and it takes a while. It's almost... It's almost misbehaving because it's pissed off. You didn't take it out more often. And you really do, do need to do that. It, the cars deserve it. How often you should drive it? I don't know, the verdict's still out on me. Um, I wanna keep it special. I don't drive it just for the simple trip of going to, the, to get a, uh, some milk, although it is a perfect way to do it. And uh, I must admit, even this season, I've changed. On the days where it was raining, I wouldn't go out. Sometimes I go out and I get caught. I don't purposely go out and drive in the rain, so that eliminates days. But if I feel I can get out there before it comes on, I will. No, the cars won't melt, but I don't want to clean this thing. It takes two hours to clean it. I'd rather spend two hours or an hour driving it than cleaning the thing. And that's the reality. Um, they actually... They do work better when it's dry, uh, and if you don't believe that, then you've never owned one of these cars. So, bottom line is, it comes down to trying to find a good balance between letting them sit in the garage, keeping them clean, keeping their value, and getting out and enjoying them, experiencing it. And I, I'm absolutely for driving them. I think it's, it's important to have a good balance. And uh, when the next person should buy one of these cars, if I buy a car off of me, 
I want to make sure it's in good shape. I'd love to see the kilometers stay low, but you can't. You can't keep them low and, and uh, keep them as garage queens unless you're an investor. And that's not the point of having these cars. I don't see uh, why you would want to do that and keep them at a thousand kilometers or 200 kilometers. That's just pointless for me. Anyways, I'm really curious what you think out there, owners of new cars and old cars. I would love to hear your thoughts on this dilemma of driving them or saving them, because I think it's a very interesting topic. Uh, by all means, uh, let me know your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And uh, if you'd like to see more content, give a thumbs up, then I'll know I'll keep doing this. All right, thanks a lot. Take care.